Is recording drums with the MIDI controller easy? Let's find out. All right, you all, so you are in front of Cakewalk. And the first thing that we need to do before we start a recording with this controller is make sure that everything is set up the correct way. So what I want you to do first is, if you haven't done so already, make sure you have Cakewalk pulled up, you created your new project, or you go to a current project that you already have saved, go to edit. Go to preferences, you can also press P on the keyboard. Once we go to preferences, we wanna make sure that our MIDI is set up correctly because today I am using an Impact LX25 Plus made by Nectar. If you're interested in a keyboard controller like this, definitely check the description below. But I advise you to have any type of controller, whether it's a MPC, whether it's a, something like this, a keyboard controller, whether it's a drum machine, whether it's an electronic pad, whether it's just a regular keyboard. Anything that has a MIDI or USB capability should work for controller functions. All right, you wanna make sure that you have devices checked under MIDI and once you're in devices if you have installed the drivers for your device then you should see it here okay now keep in mind sometimes if you open up cakewalk and you don't have your device turned on it may not recognize it so make sure you have your device turned on before you go to cakewalk so I have my impact LX and I have my MIDI in set I am not worried about the outputs because the outputs is gonna come straight out of my sound card um if i was running the x air or x18 midi out or midi in i can use that as well so i can plug a controller straight into my mixer but since this particular impact uses a usb cable i don't really need to plug it directly in all right after you do that press apply now if you want to go a step further but that's not going to be for this video because i don't want to get too difficult into this but you can also set up as a control surface just like I have my ACT MIDI controller set as a surface. Uh, this will allow me to press play, record, turn knobs, turn faders, and adjust everything within Cakewalk. So after that, you press apply, press close, and we are good to go. Like I know if I have signal, when I create a track, and I'm gonna create a track, instrument track, and I'm gonna set it up for my trusty old SI drum kit, which is in here. All right, I'm not worried about record enable or anything. I'm just gonna create the track. I know if I have sound, if I press my keyboard and I hear it. If on, on, on this keyboard, there's a 25 key range. So I have to lower an octave. Okay, I've got drum sounds, I, I'm good to go. Let me go ahead and record. So the next step, I'm gonna show you how to record it. And then after that, I'm gonna show you what you do when you only have one track to work with. So maybe you played everything on one track, but now you gotta figure out uh, how do I separate the drum sounds or how do I separate the drum tracks so that way I can mix them better. There's a few ways to do this. So we're gonna talk about it in the next step. All right, stay with me. Second step, record your beat. You like just, you know, whatever you're feeling. Okay, and now that I recorded my beat, I'm not really worried about cleaning it up, quantizing, all that kind of stuff. What I want to do is I'm going to split the, all the data that's within this one track into four separate tracks. Go, create repetitions, let's do three repetitions. I'm gonna go ahead and label each of my tracks. First track is bass drum. Of course, the second track will be the snare drum. And then I'm gonna have number three be my hats or cymbals. And then number four will be my fills, my toms, whichever you wanna call it. After this, you can go up to the view mode and you can go to the piano roll. Now this piano roll trick is something that I learned a while back, back before instrument tracks 
were even allowed in Cakewalk back when it was only about MIDI and audio. So what you wanna do is you wanna click on each of the keys of wherever your data is. So I know the bass drum falls on C3. I know the snare falls on E3. What I wanna do is I wanna go through and delete every single data or data that is not on C3. So any other note, I'm just going through. Now you can do this quickly. You can highlight it too as well, but I just like to go through each key and press it and delete it. And then once I have that set up, the only thing that should be on this particular track is the bass drum. Now this is a cool way to do it if you wanna go about making sure everything is separated so you can mix your audio differently. There's a few other ways that you can do it. Uh, you, can, you can do drum mapping or MIDI mapping. You can do freeze, uh, which allows you to freeze the MIDI, makes it a temporary audio file. Uh, so there's many different ways to do it, but if you wanna just strictly deal with the MIDI, and you want separate tracks, this is the way that I learned over 15 years ago, something like that. But don't get me wrong, whichever way works good for you, keep doing that. So I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. I'm just going through and I'm deleting all the other notes that fall on each track. So I want my snare drum to only have my snare, I want my hi-hats and my cymbals, crash cymbals, ride, all of those to be on the cymbals track and whatever my high my mid my low time i want all of that to be on its own separate track that way i can mix it later on the last thing that i'm doing right now is just really tweaking the quantization uh, i played around with it a little bit oh do i want it to swing do i want it to be straight but i really want it to be straight this is pretty easy to do when you break the drums into separate parts because now you can isolate each part and you can quantize it the way you really need to. Because if I'm doing my snare drum and my snare drum is falling on beat two and four, then I can quantize it to a 16th note or eighth note or even a fourth note for that matter. And it still will put it in time. If my hi-hats are a little bit more busier, maybe they have 30 second or some triplets or things like that, then I know I can try to focus on getting it the right way. The disadvantage of using a controller like this is that when you program music in, it's a little easier to put it where you want it. But when you're trying to record it live, whether you're using your fingers or your drums, or your hands, sometimes it doesn't always line up the way you want it to line up. So you have to take a little extra time to tweak your beat to make it sound more realistic, similar to the way that you wanted to play it. Now, if you just wanna go for the audio, then yeah, like I did in my previous video where you record drums via audio or if you're recording MIDI drums or electronic drums via audio, then that would work for you. I have all the drums separated and now I have four tracks and I can get to working on them and I can mix it and put whatever I need to do on those tracks to make them sound really good. I hope that you so far have been enjoying my Kictorial series and I hope you definitely been liking the focus on recording drums. If you are new to Cakewalk by BandLab and you're really looking for those tips that will help you out as a beginner, definitely consider subscribing to this channel. Make sure you click the notification bell so that way you're notified every time that I post new content. And definitely give it a like. All right, love you all. All the best.